What's going on everybody? My name is Arun. Welcome to my channel. This series is Caesar Tutorials on the Numerical Python Package, NumPy. So in this tutorial, we will be looking at some of the functions that are associated with the NumPy arrays uh, for matrix ma matrix operations. So let's get started. Let's say I have a matrix A, which is a, ra which is a random matrix with 5 rows and let's say 3 columns for a change. 5 rows and 3 columns, uh, whose values are lying between 0 and 10. All right. So if you look at my matrix, I have five rows and three columns. Sweet. Now let me find the maximum value on it. I can use that. I can find that by using this command a a dot a max. Okay, and press enter. And there you go. It'll it'll give me the maximum value present in the entire matrix. And sure enough, the maximum value in this matrix is eight, and you got it over here. It'll just give you the first recurrence of it. Similarly, if you want to find the minimum value, just hit a dot min and you'll get the minimum value in the matrix. And surprisingly, there's no zero in this matrix. Anyway, now this is okay, but what if I want the I want the mat, uh, maximum values and minimum values in each row or each column or something? Can I do something about it? Yes, you can. Just have to type a dot max and then type axis equal to, equals and then you specify a value. Let me just specify zero for now. And press enter. I got values 848. Eight. Okay, and look at the size of it, it's just 3. So, what exactly happened is, is that uh, it took each and every column, and then in each and every column, it figured out, it found out which is the maximum value present. So, here in this example, the first column, the maximum value is 8, in the second column, the maximum value is 4, in the third column, the maximum value is 8 again. So, hence, it gave the results 848. Eight. And look at the sizes, it's uh, it's reduced by one size. So when I say axis equal to zero, the first axis will be chopped off. And what will be what remains if the first axis is chopped off? You will just get only the second axis second axis. Who I mean second I mean you'll get only the remaining axis, so which is three units in size. Three units in size. Cool. Hope you got this. Similarly, when you type axis equals one, what it will do is it'll just go look into the each and every column each and every column and then we'll find sorry, each and every row and then we'll find the maximum values in each and every row and it'll return me a matrix with five uh, with uh, the dimension of the f dimension of the previous matrix so here it says here the values are two three six okay so the first uh, maximum value is six for the second row the maximum value is five afterwards it's eight afterwards it's eight and then four and there you go six five eight eight four just like we thought and look at the size it's five units. Cool. Similarly, um, similarly, uh, you can also find the uh, index in which the values are present. For, uh, for that, it's fa fairly simple. You just have to type uh, arg in the front, so it's arg max, and it'll give you it'll give you the index in which the maximum value is present. To understand this output, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a dot flatten a dot flatten uh, to b and if you look at b b is the b is the matrix whose value whose values are obtained by flattening flattening out the matrix a that is to say take the entries along the rows and keep it as them keep it as keep them uh, one uh, one behind the other so after 2 3 6 put 3 4 5 and afterwards 8 1 7 and so on and so forth and you'll get a single stretched matrix like this all right and in this matrix uh, look find out the largest value so the largest value is 8 okay and if you look find the location it is actually at the sixth index so if we start so if we start with 0 this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay so that's what this result gives us what argmax does is that without any argument if with any argument not being present it'll just flatten the matrix and then find the maximum value and then it'll give me the index in which the maximum value is present similarly if we just type argmin presenter it will give me the it will flatten the matrix and it will tell me the loca index location wherein the minimum value is present at least the first occurrence of the minimum value so if I just if, so if I look at it this was 6 and the minimum value is 1 so it got me like this but this may not be uh, uh, enough sometimes you might want a little more uh, fancier one all right so for that similar to the matrix uh, argmax and argmin Okay, similar to, similar to the max and minimum, you can also pass in the axis argument as well. If you type axis equal to zero, it will check along all the row columns and then find me the index notation index wherein the maximum values are present. 
So here, uh, it says the result is 2, 1, 3, and that is because in the first col in the first uh, uh, column, the maximum value is in the index position, uh, index position 2. In the second column, the index position is 1, in which the maximum value is present. Similarly, in the third column, the maximum value is present at index position number 3. All right. Similarly, if you look at uh, argmax axis equals 1, you get the same thing. So, the, so this is the maximum value, I'm present at 2, uh, present at 2 again, present at 0, um, yeah, present at 0th position, a second position, I mean, second position, and then the 0th position. You'll get the first occurrence of the maximum value, alright? So, there you go. That's how you go, that's how you go about with it. And not only that, you can do a little more other uh, fancy stuff as well. For instance, the mean. If we just type the function directly, Okay, a dot mean, it will give you the mean of all the values present in it. To cross verify, what we can do is we can just sum up all the values. So, the sum up all the values is actually 61. So, you can add up all these values and it will count out to be 61. And then since there are 15 entries in it, so I divide this by 15, it will give me the same answer as, the, as we have over here. So, mean command helps you to average or average out, the, uh, take the arithmetic mean of all the entries in the matrix and give you, give you out the result. Cool. Some, sometimes if you want to do something like row average or a row sum or column sum or something like that, row mean or column mean or something like that, you can just specify the axis and specify the argument and it will give you that, give you directly. Alright. So, just to give, just to cross verify, what it does is that when I put axis equal to 0, you just add up all the elements in the each and every column and then divide by the number of entries in each column and give you the result. To cross verify, you can say a dot sum and we'll type axis equal to zero and press enter. The sums are 18, 13 and 30 and you divide this by five because in each entry there are each column there are five entries and there you go. The results match perfectly. Cool. Similarly, you can also go for column column uh, column arithmetic mean like this you can also okay, verify that verify that as well so there are like how many there are like three entries in each column sorry in each row when well, there you go they match perfectly all right so let me clear this up and let me print a again so that you can see and after mean there is the st me uh, there is a standard deviation function and the variance function and they do the sim they do something similar so if we just type a dot std, it'll take this. It'll find me the standard deviation for the all the elements combined, okay, in the matrix. And if I would type a dot std, std, and type axis equal to zero, it'll find the standard deviations for each and every uh, call each and every column, and it'll give me the result. If I type axis equals one, it'll find the standard deviation for each and every element in the rows. I mean, for each and every rows, and give it to me as a result. Similarly, there is the variance function, variance function, which will give me the variance of all the entries. So just to cross verify, if you take this standard deviation and multiply it by itself, you will get this variation as variation as it is. So just type a dot std and then square it out, take the square of it, and there you go. They match well. Uh, ignore this last two con digits, if this may be some computation. Uh, uh, numerical precision error, but nevertheless you see they match perfectly. All right. Now similarly, uh, similar to that of STD, you can also type var and then type axis equal to zero, and then get the variations for along axis axis zero and axis one as well, and there you go. You can do you can do this, and not only that, you can also sp you can also do something like cumulative sums and all for instance if you just type a dot cum sum and press enter and there you go what will do what it does is that it will just flatten out my matrix and then it will give me cumulative sum for instance for the first time it's 2 and afterwards if I afterwards the next cumulative sum is 2 plus 3 so it's 5 and afterwards it's 2 plus 3 plus 6 or uh, 5 plus 6 so it's 11 after the 11 plus 3 is 14 and then 14 plus 4 is 18, 18 plus 5 is 23. Like that, it'll give me a matrix with the cumulative sums in it. Cool. If this is a one dimensional matrix again, this will give me a nice cumulative sum as well. So let's say cum sum equals a dot cum sum. Let me save this because this might be helpful afterwards. 
and then also I can do a cumulative product so uh, a dot cum it's called as cum product and there you go It'll, this matrix will give me the cum cumulative product of each and every entry in it cool and uh, and uh, not not only that it also it can uh, there's also some functions for uh, sorting the arguments and arguments for example for example uh, for example uh, let me clear this out let's look at a let me have a flat matrix a underscore flat a underscore flat that is actually given by a underscore flatten a underscore flat this will give me a flatten matrix now if I were to if I were to type np dot arg sort this one is available separately and if I type a underscore flat okay see what happened or see what happened over here what it actually does what it actually does is that it'll just sort out the matrix matrix in this uh, uh, matrix in the sorted uh, indexes in the sorted ma manner just to give you an idea we just tip np dot sort and press a into it um, okay a flat okay a flat and there you go all the values in this matrix are flattened out and then sorted for me directly now this args are gives me the index uh, index notations of how the value should look like for instance the first value first value should be at in the position number three okay that's what it's uh, the first that's what it says <coughs> okay so it says the uh, first value should be at position number three and sure enough the first value got to position number three and similarly the second value okay, second value of which uh, as uh, whose index notation is one should be over here so it's one two three four five so it should be in the fifth position so this uh, this three goes to the fifth position, so on. You can cross verify and compare it with your compare it with yourselves. All right. Um, what else? I I okay. I think we saw, we saw enough functions in this one video. Uh, so I'll stop here. In the next video, uh, we'll go about with a uh, few more functions that are available for matrices, and those will be a little more complex, a little more complicated and bigger than when compared to this. Alright, so that's all I have for you all in this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time in another interesting video. Till then, take care.